I can go now. So GPD is the company best known for, well, really this. Uh, actually, oh, you know what? No, I even have. Oh, you guys are going to see. Hey, this is our stream cart. And this is Jake. He runs the stream cart. Uh, no, check this out over here, over here. Uh, no, you could have stayed right where you were. <laughs> this right here is the GPD whatever the crap. Yeah, this is the Pocket Pocket 2, if I recall correctly. And I use this thing for whenever I need like kind of a computer, but also I don't care if it takes me a long time to get anything done because the, the interface on it is kind of kludgy. OK, well, that's kind of what GPD is known for. They've got like more gaming oriented devices. They've got more consumer oriented devices like that one over there. And then this. Well, this is one with really, really weird positioning. So we've got an early advanced unit here. You can see even the Indiegogo campaign isn't live yet. Now, normally we actually don't really even talk about anything that's uh, Kickstarter or Indiegogo or crowdfunded uh, because, you know, the track records for these companies for delivering on what they're promised, on what they promised, yeah, they're not great. However, GPD has actually kind of been around a while and they've successfully delivered quite a few crowdfunded products at this point. So I'm not too worried about it. And this is the micro PC, the business oriented mini PC. So come on over, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's have a look at this thing. So first there's their positioning for it. So you can see this isn't even live yet. It'll be up soon. I actually don't know what the pricing is. Um, but in terms of, I'll go through the specs later, but I want to talk about sort of what they think this is for. In the fields of network communication, electric power, exploration, mining, archaeology, education, training, manufacturing, service chain, call center, business services, public institutions, government, military, and many more. This is the perfect alternative to traditional notebooks and it is adaptive to extreme conditions. So then they proceed to compare it to the Surface Go. It is much better than Microsoft Surface Go, which they say has been kind of dubbed an iPad Pro killer. Okay, so then they figure if they're better than the Surface Go, they are by extension better than the iPad Pro. Sure. Um, so let's go ahead here. So they compare to the Surface Go. Uh, so they've got a Celeron N4100. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my power brick here. So this is just a little... Uh, what is this thing? 5 volts, 3 amps, 9 volt, 2.67, 12 volt, 2 amp. It's one of those uh, quick, quick charging adapters here. Go ahead and plug that in. Uh, so it's got a Celeron N4100, which is four cores, four threads at anywhere between one gigahertz and. Uh, da, 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 hold on, I actually have a way more ghetto spec sheet, but one that's actually probably more useful for this particular thing. Come on, really? There we go. 1 gigahertz to 2.4 gigahertz. So that's Gemini Lake. Uh, we've got, does Ed need something? Oh, it's Nick. What can I do for you, Nick? We're live streaming. Yeah, I know. What even is tiny computers? Oh, a tiny computer. What even is tiny uh, computer? Is that what it's called? What even is tiny computer? You know what? I love it. Leave it. Leave it. No. No, I love it. No. Jake, that's an executive order. <laughs> Leave it the way it is. I no, I demand you change it back. <laughs> yeah. What even is tiny computer? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Good work. Good work, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> I have way too much fun with these live streams. It's great. All right. Uh, let's build this thing up. Uh, right. I didn't run through the specs. So it's got uh, 8 gigs of LPDDR4. Oh, wait, really? No, 4 gigs of LPDDR4 memory. It's got 128 gigs of M.2 storage, not NVMe, mind you, uh, just regular SATA M.2 storage. It's got AC wireless. It's got, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know. This is only a 720p display, but it should be noted that at this size, Honestly, that doesn't really matter. Like, if you come in and have a look at this thing, like, it looks quite sharp. Like, uh, here, if we bring up, let's just bring up a browser. Oh, 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 we do have another browser. Oh, thank goodness. One second here. I'm sorry. Yeah. If we bring up a browser here, we'll go ahead and have a look at some text. Like, it looks pretty good. Not as good as their devices that I've seen before. In fact, I believe the one over on my desk actually has a 1080p screen, uh, or it might even be 1920 by 1200. Don't, don't, don't quote me on that. But it's definitely usable. Uh, it's got Gorilla Glass 4, but unlike 
everything else I've ever seen from these guys, it does not appear to be a touchscreen. So you are actually expected to navigate on this thing like this. So you've got your trackpad here. Is there too much glare on the screen or are you good, David? No, that's perfect. Good? All right. So you've got your trackpad here, and then you've got your left and right and your middle click over here. So you go ahead and... Is, is Chrome going to launch? That moment okay. when Edge wins by default. Can we... Oh, it's got a click pad. Oh, maybe that's why my clicks weren't registering. Or maybe it's just slow because even faster than a Surface Go does not necessarily a fast one make it. Uh, performance. There's a mouse right there, by the way. There's a mouse? No, no, I'm, I'm going to have the experience that they expect uh, archaeologists to have in the field here. Somebody asked, is the keyboard mushy? Oh, I'm sure the keyboard is mushy. I mean, OK. So, Give her some clicks. Let's OK, what is going on here? It keeps kind of misregistering my clicks. One thing to note is that I don't want to judge it necessarily too hard based on its state right now. This is a pre-production unit. But also, I do have to say, GPD, that you could have done probably a slightly better job here of, oh, yeah, it's a little mush-tastic. OK, can you look away while I enter my password? That moment when you're live streaming and you, yeah, I'm good. Nice. I like it. Good work, David. He's got sass. This is why we like Mr. Gautier. Uh, let's go ahead and expand this. What is going on? It keeps registering phantom clicks. Like, are you messing with me? Is there a wi no, wireless no. dongle in here? There might actually be, but I'm not messing with you. Okay. Is there a wi where did it go? No, no, I took it out. I took it. Okay. I think I took it out. You didn't lose it, right? No, I don't think so. Okay, that's good. See, it's a okay. All right, all right. Just okay. Let's I did try to this. This let's try to reset it. You know, just chill out. Okay. All right. Crisis. My just no, it doesn't run crisis. It doesn't run crisis. Okay. Uh, okay, I w <sighs> okay. All right. Well, <laughs> they're gonna need some time to uh, sort out that trackpad thing for sure. If it runs anything like that, I will not be impressed. Uh, let's go ahead and have a look here. So our CPU. Now, originally they spec this thing for six watts. But we actually just got, Jake just installed it today, uh, some kind of like a firmware update or something, BIOS something update, like something like that. They called an EC update. An EC update that's going to increase it to 10 watts, which means we should see actually like pretty decent import, uh, performance. So we've got 10 watts, four threads up to 2 point whatever gigahertz, 1.1 gigahertz base it actually says here. And why don't we start with a good old fashioned Cinebench, right? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Uh, we got a Percussive maintenance, yes. That is what we were going for. And don't worry, I haven't forgotten to get back to the keyboard with you guys, but uh, I want to see this Cinebench run, and let's face it, this could take a little while, so now's a good time to get started on it. All right. Boom. Cinebench R15, baby. If we're over, do you remember what the Surface Go was good for? Was it like around 400 or so? No idea. Thanks, Jake. You don't have Google in front of you or anything, so you couldn't. This is kind of like, you know how when they ask the producer on a radio show, like, hey, do you remember the thing? And they actually are looking it up in the background. All right, look at this. He's, see, he, he may not be the fastest kid on the street, but darn it, he gets there. <laughs> oh, no, my computer crashed. He may not be the sharpest tool in the shed, but he's certainly a tool. He may not be the, no, okay, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Poor Jake. I'm just, I'm just trying to kill time while this runs. Oh, we're not running yeah, on, yeah, hold on. Story. We're going to run on wall power here. I don't know if that's going to make a difference. All right, hit me, hit me. Uh, its highest run, number one, was 162. A 162? Lowest run, number seven, was 120. All right, all right. So that's a pretty low bar, anywhere from 120 to 162. With that said. The surface scale was 1.6. This is not some impressive performance. One thing we should have a look at here, though, is what our CPU is actually running at. So this is nice. Check this out. We are seeing speeds to the tune of around 1.6 gigahertz turbo while we are stressing all four cores. And actually, I can use this opportunity to go through the I.O. with you guys. So check this out. Headphone microphone jack. All right. Nothing over here. That looks like a microphone, though, so bear that in mind. Over here, micro SD, full-size USB Type-A, 
Moving around to the back. What? What? So we got gigabit LAN. 100 megabit. It says gigabit on the spec sheet. Oh, weird. I plugged it in. It was only 100 megabit. Okay, I'm going to try it again. I'll try it okay. again. Okay, so they say gigabit, but we're going to try that. We've got two more USB 3 Type A's, a USB 3 Type C that also ha acts as a power input. HDMI, oh yeah, and this is also compatible with hubs like this. So you could add full-size SD and all this other crap to it with just one connector. I love USB Type-C. Uh, HDMI out, and is that an RS-232 serial connector? So given the market that they're targeting, that actually makes a ton of sense because I if I was out in the field and I wanted to connect to some archaic piece of scientific equipment or even a modern piece of scientific equipment because a lot of it still uses a serial interface, I could totally do that with this thing. Now mind you, there are USB to serial dongles, so it's not like you would have to buy one of these. It's just one of those sort of all-in-one kind of creature comfort things that I could, I could definitely get behind. So the screen is six inches. I don't think I mentioned that before. And this turbo speed has managed to sustain itself here. So we're still running 1.6 gigahertz. And we can have a listen to how loud it is. So in terms of thermals, they've got nice big vents on the bottom. They've got exhaust on the back here. Can you hear it on my mic, Jake? Oh, God. OK, sorry. Well, I want it to, I want it to be representative of like what it's like. I mean, it's not super loud. Like if, you can turn the fan off. Yeah, listen with, you can turn the, oh, that's right. So I've seen this feature on their stuff before. I'm not going to do it during the Cinebench run, but there's actually a switch on the top here where we can turn the cooling fan off. And I suspect that would also probably dial back the CPU to more like that 6 watt limit. And we'd probably see around 1 gigahertz sustained. I'm guessing. Don't, don't quote me on that. All right, we're just about done here. The suspense I can hardly wait. We ready? 181. Okay, so in fairness, that is better than a Surface Go. With that said, the Surface Go with its 10 inch screen um, and just sort of general largerness and more sexy sex appealness uh, also has its place. But come, come on in, let's do some uh, typing tests here. Okay. You know what, Jake? Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to touch type. Oh, man. Can you, can, OK, so I'm looking uh, here. I'm looking this way. Can you, uh, can you dictate to me, please? Oh, wait. No, no. One, well, first. You, no, no, you'll, you'll dictate. Don't, don't worry. Don't worry. You'll be the dictator. <laughs> uh, I just I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to output to this instead. Uh, oh, oh, right, uh, PIA, right. This video is brought to you by Private Internet Access. Private Internet Access has thousands of servers in dozens of countries all around the world. It's a great way to have a secure VPN experience. Go check it out at the link in the video description. It's also super affordable. Okay. Hey, check this out. So I'm going to touch type. Dictate me. Uh, hello, my name is Linus. Is that, are you even, oh, wow, you're really slow at this. Uh, it's hard. <laughs> I really like eating. Hey, I got hello. And NT is just like uh, like a slight offset from my. You should try it, again. it got a little rougher later. <laughs> okay, okay. I like eating burritos. Oh, hold on. Oh. I do like burritos. I like eating burritos, but I much prefer pinto beans over black beans, and today they didn't have pinto beans. This is a, re this is a really long sentence. <laughs> Do not even close. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do, you mean, what do you mean not close? I got, I got burrito. Burrito? Why are so many spaces? It's hard to tell if I'm hitting it. <laughs> oh, wow, that space bar is horrendous. Okay, come on, come on in, you guys. Come have a come have a closer look at this. So the the spacing of the keyboard is not great because even though to their credit they've actually managed a fairly standard layout. So the enter key, backspace, uh, shift ish. There's an up arrow there that's sort of in the way. Are all kind of where they're supposed to be. But even just keep looking at this. It's fine. I'll be right back. But even if we contrast it to their own previous mini PC attempts. 
the ability to like actually put a finger on each one of the keys is severely hampered. So if you have a look here, like can you get a close up shot there to show how many keys my four fingers are covering, even all completely close together? Can you see that? You get you got that? Because I've got a I've got a four to five ratio here. Rotate it a little bit more towards me. Yeah, how's that? You like that four to five ratio here? And bear in mind of course too that while my fingers are a little bit like thick, sort of, compared to their length, they're, my hands are pretty small. So you are not, you are not going to have a better time. Um, so this is the kind of device that you can pretty much take for granted that you are not touch typing on. You're basically, like you can tell they kind of intend for it to be used like, like this. Da, 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 da. And then in, in an emergency, if I, Oh man, if I need to enter some text, I could be like, okay, I'm filling oop, out this field report. You know, like that's kind of the extent of the text entry you're doing. Um, I think for a lot of people, how do I say this without coming across the wrong way? People who are old enough to be my parents. Uh, I think for a lot of people, this would actually be faster than inputting on a smartphone. But for myself, I can definitely type faster on a touchscreen than I than I could on this. Like, there's no question. With that said, your smartphone doesn't have the ability to run Cinebench, even if it's only 121 points. Uh, so there's a lot of things that you just flat out wouldn't be able to do without a full you know, x86 processor, you know, your full web browser, and even support for, I mean, really anything. So one of the things that we queued up to do here is, uh, here, actually, let's fire up Ida. And then, yeah, I'll, we're going to fire up Rocket League. Heck yeah. Not that that's going to make me any better at Rocket League. You know, it's really funny. I often use playing on keyboard as an excuse for sucking at Rocket League whenever we demo it or whenever I have to, like, do it in B-roll or whatever else. Um, and Jake's on to me because I think he knows that I'm actually just terrible. So he provided me with an Xbox controller to ensure that there's no excuse for me. Um, now, in fairness to me, though, I actually do not know the controls on keyboard. I just also don't know them on controller, which is something that I had always left off when uh, we were having these kinds of conversations. So computer summary. What do we got here? Computer name? No, what am I, what am I, what am I looking for? Oh. All right, we can get our temperatures and all that kind of cool stuff. How many people are watching right now? Uh, 14,000 on YouTube, some on oh. Flipflings. Thanks, guys. 1,000 people on Twitch. Hope you guys are having as much fun as we are. By the way, WAN show's not canceled today. Uh, same pre-recorded. This stream, what, really? Yeah, this guy, uh, his name is Quote It Flat. Pre-recorded, eh? How do you like them apples? Uh, this, uh, yeah, this, this, WAN show's not canceled. We wanted to do this stream like four hours ago and then it, it got, it got delayed. It got a little delayed. Uh, all right, you know what? I'm not gonna bother like stress testing. Let's just hit it with Rocket League and see what happens. Hold on, I'm gonna plug this in. I love the IO though. Like it just has everything. Do they still not believe me? It's just like, everybody's like, call down, call down. Call and the down. guy was like, sorry, ma'am. <laughs> Look, we only pre-record when we feel like it, okay? So, you know, come on. Actually, we've only done it, I think, probably like three times we were, we've pre-recorded WAN show. Uh, once was when we were on vacation somewhere, and then another time was when like WAN show fell on Christmas Day or something. Like it just wasn't reasonable. Uh, all right, press any button to start. Oh. oh, wish me luck. Is this not pairing? Have you paired this? No, I just. You didn't pair this. Be interesting to the Thank you for that. You know how to do it? Yeah, I know how to do it. It's just, you know, if you do things ahead of time, then it makes for a smoother video, especially when it's a live stream, Jake. Do you want a chair to sit on, David? Sure. Yeah, that would be a good idea. I'll, I'll kneel. Here, catch. Yes, did you see that? You missed it, didn't you? Oh, David, behind the back catch and you missed it. 
That's a good throw, Jake. <laughs> All right. Press any button to start. Is somebody saying this guy that said it was pre-recorded and he called out is a, he's a bot? Oh my god, that looks... pre-recorded the comment. That looks awful. I think you did turn the settings way down. Uh, wait a minute, why am I not seeing the settings thing? Also, is overscan on? This looks horrendous. Uh, well, I mean, we don't even, we still don't even know if it's gonna like run decent anyway, so why don't we find out? If we're getting many, many FPS, then we can always turn the details up. Oh boy, that does not look promising. <laughs> 6 gigahertz, not enough for Rocket League. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Slow motion! Is this with bots? What's that? Is this with bots? Yeah. Oh, okay, so your CPU is having to calculate for that. I wonder if online would be slightly better. Uh... I'm thinking maybe, probably not. Oh man, man I suck at this game. He said as though there were games he doesn't suck at. Where is it? Where's the ball? Oh, there it is. Nice slideshow. <laughs> this is not an amazing experience. Excuses. Uh, it's kind of, where'd it go? Oh, oh. You know what? Conveniently, though, that means that I can blame my terribleness on this bad frame rate. Oh, crap. I just want one goal. That's all I want. Is that so much to ask? No one knows what's going on right now. Oh, crying out loud. Oh, I just hit it the wrong way. Wait, where is it? Oh my gosh. Terrible. Terrible. Ah! David, are you judging me right now? I'm judging the computer harder. Thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, Donald is asking, is it more powerful than Jibo? Yay! Oh yeah, I'm wearing my Jibo shirt today. Uh, yes, it's more powerful than Jibo. Anything's more powerful than Jibo. So, you know what's interesting? Like, I didn't think 720p was that bad. And if you come in here and look at this screen, honestly, it's, it's far more look -atable. I guess that's just the beauty of pixel density, hey? Because if I get my face in really close, like, yeah, it looks like garbage. But if I was actually playing on the little screen, it wouldn't bother me nearly, nearly as much. Like, there's not a lot of detail there, but it's still, like, it's more usable. And actually, does it seem to be running smoother, David? Yeah. Now that's interesting. Has it kind of settled in a little bit? Because even up here looks a little better now. No, it does look smoother on here. That doesn't make any sense, though. That's weird, unless... The external display is running at 30 hertz. It doesn't seem to be. No, that's 60 for sure. I'm gonna double check just to be sure. But I am like very certain that this is 60 hertz. Yep. Weird. Okay. Well, honestly, I mean, is there much else for us to say about this thing at this point? So unlike some of their other devices, this is not a mobile gaming solution in any way, shape, or form. Uh, the keyboard is really only usable from like a... Uh... There we go. <laughs> from like a, a hunting and pecking with two thumbs kind of perspective. They definitely have some work to do on the trackpad, although like, like with their track record, I do have a reasonable degree of confidence that they're gonna figure that out. Um, 
And the form factor is not quite as slim and sexy as some of the stuff that they've done before, but I can kind of understand it based on that they intend this for a very different use case. Really the selling point for this guy is the IO. So if you need that video output, remember type C can be converted to anything, including like VGA out. If you need serial and you need something that's just kind of like throw in your, in your bag and, and, and like go, um, and you think there's a good chance you won't need it, but just in case you do, it's nice to have, then I could kind of see this thing's place um, as a device like that. Now, uh, one thing I did promise that I was gonna check before we finished here is the LAN. So Jake says he only got uh, 100 megabit, but they do advertise gigabit LAN. So let's go ahead and see if that's, uh, if that's a thing. It is really cool being able to hook up like a full computer's worth of I.O. to it though. Like that's pretty sick. All right, let's go check this out. Change adapter options. Come on. It's pretty slow. Gigabit. Yep. I got gigabit. Pardon? I got gigabit. Oh, cool. So it must have just been your connection or something like that. So in conclusion, if you see your specific need for this, go ahead and back it. I personally wouldn't buy one. And this is brought to you by PIA, speaking of things that I'd buy. PIA, Private Internet Access, is the VPN for pretty much anyone. It works on up to five devices at once with a single account. They've got apps for Windows, Mac, Linux, Chrome. Uh, I think there's like other platforms coming at some point in the future. Uh, all the platforms they support. They have a Chrome extension. Did I say that already? Sorry? PIA? PIA, yeah, 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 yeah. Everything. Yeah, pretty much everything. They've got thousands of servers. They don't keep logs. Uh, they've got servers in dozens of countries worldwide. So wherever it works best for you in terms of performance or in terms of features, like if you wanted to access, oh, I don't know, you know, BBC video, let's say, for example, then you'd want to set your location to the UK. Um, and you guys can check them out at the link in the video description. PIA is affordable and uh, high performance. I mean, what else is there to really say about it? Back when we were switching our PIA endorsement, we really shopped around and PIA stood out to us as just having a really long track record of not just good performance and good customer service, but also just caring about the privacy of their clients. So go check them out at the link in the video description. So thanks for watching, guys. If you disliked this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, or maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link below. We probably won't have that. The Indiegogo campaign isn't even live yet, but whatever. Uh, also down there is our merch store, which has, oh, whoops. <laughs> uh, oh, cool shirts like this one. Oh, uh, Not like, I don't think we have oh, this, like this one, one in one. there. Cool shirts like that one. And our community forum, which you should totally join. This is that's totally an LTT shirt, actually. It's, it's, see, look, it says where does it say LTT? Uh, here, this side? here, L T. What's you're you're making it harder to see. Jake, come on, LTT. There you go. Okay. Cool. LTT. Uh, oh, should I? Uh, oh, should I talk to some of the super chat peeps? Uh, Did I ignore them? You're you're. Oh 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 oh. Uh, there's Yo, like one. shout out. Thank. I work at Geek Squad, where my coworkers and I have your videos on 24/7. You guys are awesome. Uh, you can Epic Geek Squad people. Maybe? Can we get a WAN show ETA? Oh man, as soon as <laughs> I can. Okay, so here's the plan. We have one more video to do. Do you have the Ulephone here? Ule uh, or the Ulephone or whatever? Okay, so we're doing a video on the Ulephone Power 5. We have to shoot that today. Check this out. This is going to be our live stream next week, I think. So in screen fingerprint reader. Ba bow. Oh, give her a minute. Ba bow. Oh, I wonder, does the in-screen fingerprint reader work from the, when you're on the, no? Okay. Uh, let's try that a little more gracefully. Bam. Dang it, why is it locking? I, I, stupid thing. Anyway, whatever. The point is it has displays on both sides, okay? It's that phone. Uh, so I'm thinking we'll do something with that next week. We're just, uh, we lost it in our warehouse for a couple weeks, so we're so late to it now that I don't know if it justifies a full dedicated video. You guys can feel free to let me know in the chat if you disagree, if you'd like to see it get the full review treatment. Um, but it's the Vivo Next dual screen or whatever they call this thing. Um, but yeah, so I gotta go do that Ulephone thing. And then I think that's it, and then WAN show, right? Yeah. Heck yeah. So we'll see you guys there. Am I killing it now? Yeah, you might as well. You're killing it. With fire. Killing it with fire.